Hi, my name's John from Cast and Stall, and today I'm going to show you how to install a butler bell for the outside of this beautiful door that we've got here. So we're also going to describe how to install the butler bell for the inside and the bell pull for the outside. We're going to fit it to the side of our door and then we'll go inside later and fit the butler bell on the inside. So with the complete bell pull set you get three parts to it. You get the pull rod and you get the crank and you get a chain which connects the two parts together with obviously their associated screws. Um, we actually do three types of bell pull. This particular one is the D2100, the Kirkpatrick Fleur de Lis bell pull, but we also do the D2085 Cavendish bell pull and a D2098 Gothic bell pull. All three work exactly the same way as this one, uh, but we're going to demonstrate how to install this one. Uh, the others work in exactly the same way. This is the complete bell pull set, but we can sell you just the crank on its own if you need that part, or just the pull rod on its own. There's also an electrical fitted version. This particular one is a mechanical version where we've got a mechanical crank on the top and not an electrical one, which we'll describe to you later in the video. Okay, so the first part that we need to install is the crank. So as we described earlier, we've got the pull rod has three parts. It has the crank, a chain, and then it's got the pull rod itself. But the crank's the most important bit, and this is what we're going to need to fit first. So the crank basically has a rocker arm system on it that works like that. There's a little spring on the back which forces it to go back every time. This part is the bit that's going to be on the outside of your wall. But it means that this whole section here on the back is going to have to be recessed into the wall, which means you're going to need to chisel the wall out to accommodate all this whole rear section. So what we need to do first is think about where this is going to be positioned on the door. Really good place. It's kind of high up at the top of the door because we're going to have a chain coming down and the pull rod coming down below it here. So a nice high up position, probably towards the corner of the top of the door frame in a nice suited position. And also, because we need to chisel this part out and recess it into the brickwork, a good area to look for is where some cement is between your bricks there. It's a nice starting point to start chiseling out your wall. You can easily chisel that cement away and then you might have to take just a small section of your brick off just to accommodate the width of the back of that. So first of all we're going to need to put that on the wall and mark out roughly where that chiseling position needs to be. Now generally with these butler bells, if I show you a bit closer, we need to get this whole section of the back in so that accommodates this whole hinge part on here and generally the width of that whole hinge is usually about the same width as this middle section here so we've got to chisel very accurately to make sure that the width of this is wide enough to get the whole of the back of this in but we don't want it too wide so we can see a gap behind the brickwork so we pretty much want to chisel the exact width of this out. So it's really straightforward to do, it just means we've got to score the brickwork first, get a nice start on it and then we can start chiseling that away. We'll show you how to do that next. So what we need to do next then is get the crank in a position where we're happy with and just kind of mark out where these sides are. So use a little screwdriver or a pencil and just start to score your brickwork where it needs to go. Obviously we know where the edge of the cement is, it's this side probably that's more important and we'll just put a bit of a line down the side of the, uh, of the brick so we know roughly where we're going to be chiseling. So we'll just get that marked on there. Once we've got the line marked we can then use a bolster chisel and a hammer basically. So we need a bolster chisel like this and we can start to chip away at the brickwork and just tap away there so you get a nice scored line as you come down. Do the same on the brick side and we're trying to create a nice sharp clean edge down that brick and then really go for it. Start to chisel that out and make sure you keep that width exactly the same. Doesn't matter what it looks like behind it but just keep this edge nice and sharp as you go. Once you start cracking into that you'll soon find it comes out quite easily. So by the power of magic we've chiseled our hole out now. So we've got it all done. We've basically chipped away the sides there with a the bolster chisel and worked it right back because basically that hole's got to be deep enough to take the whole of that back rocker arm. So we've got to probably go a good three inches into the wall there, make sure the cavity is the same uh, to accommodate that arm at the back. So I've already drilled the holes and fitted wall plugs as well. So it now works so the whole crank fits into the wall nicely. It's just about the same width as what we were talking about earlier. So it's, uh, it, the, the front plate here covers these, these holes. And obviously we've got four holes drilled. You can easily mark the four holes with a pencil and just drill those out and put a wall plug in. But our crank sits in there nicely. And more importantly, this rocker arm is now free to move. Nothing's going to stop it. It's not rubbing on any brickwork behind at the back. It's not catching on anything and being forced out wrong. It's nice and free to do its thing. 
So the next thing we need to do is look at how we're going to connect this to the butler bell inside. So we do a couple of different versions of the, uh, of the complete butler bell. There's an electrical version and a mechanical version. This is obviously the mechanical version. The electrical version works pretty much the same way, but it hasn't got this whole section on the back to it. Uh, it's purely an arm which comes out the front of this, which when you pull it down, it forces a button to be pressed in the center of the crank there. So uh, there's none of this chilling out of the wall to accommodate this rear section. It just doesn't exist on the electrical one. So they're a lot easier to fit. Uh, but we're describing the mechanical version here, so that we've already chiselled out our wall. So the next thing we need to do is attach a cord or a string to the back of this, which is going to connect to the bell on the inside. So we obviously need to get that cord through the wall. So all we need to do now is work out where this little position is inside our slot and drill a hole all the way through the wall so it comes out the other side. We can pretty much line it up with our slot there to see where it is. We can mark the inside of our hole and then we'll just use a masonry drill bit, a pretty long one, to drill all the way through your wall to make it come through on the inside. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need to do is attach our cord to the back of our crank. The cord is actually supplied with the butler bells that are going to go on the inside of your door. We do two types of butler bell. There's the JT2086, which is the brass version, or the J2089, which is the nickel version. Both of them will come with this cord. So it's a simple case of just tying it through the eyelet on the back of the crank uh, and tie a little knot on the back. So we're going to need to thread the other end of the cord through the hole that we drilled in our slot first. We want to make sure that's a really good strong knot on there. Might be worth putting a bit of glue on it as well, just to make sure it's never going to come undone, because you don't want to take this off again. So just a case of thread the uh, cord through that little hole there and pass it all the way to the inside where it'll come through the hole on the inside of the wall. Okay, so we need to get the cord through the hole. Now sometimes it can be a bit tricky to get the cord through the hole. There's a cavity behind that wall. We've got to get through this brickwork, through the cavity, and through the brick we have beyond. So it's a good idea to use the drill bit that you drill the hole with. And we can put that in the hole. Then we can get the cord and using a bit of insulation tape or a bit of masking tape, we can strap the end of the cord to the end of the drill so it's just fixed on and then we can push the drill through the wall pull it through from the other side and it will pull the cord with it therefore we can get the cord through the wall a bit easier okay so we've got the cord through now so uh, we just need to obviously have drilled the four holes and when you fit the holes make sure you use a raw plug such as this in one of the holes uh, obviously for the screw to go in to hold it so we just need to pull a bit of the slack cord through now, when you actually fit the crank, you need to make sure that it operates so that the top part there is going to pull down and spring back up. That's the way it should be. It shouldn't be that way around. It's got to be that way so the top springs back up. Um, pull a bit of the slack cord through it and just locate it into the slot. And then we'll just screw it onto the wall using the four holes that we did earlier. Okay, so we'll just uh, tighten up the last screw there we've got in the uh, crank. And that's it. It fits to the top of the wall. All works nice and uh, freely. So the next part is to fit the actual pull rod itself. We had an old bell in here, so it uh, might be nice to cover that hole up and actually position the crank so it came up in a nice straight line with where that was originally. So I've got the pull here, so we're going to put it probably around here on the wall um, just to cover that hole up, and it's in nice and alignment with that. And then we're going to join these two parts together with the chain. So I've actually already drilled the holes for the, uh, for the bell pull itself, just mark where the hole positions were, drilled the holes out, and fitted a raw plug in each one and it's just a case of screwing that straight onto the wall. Okay so we've got the uh, port fitted to the wall, I'll just do the last screw up on it there so it's nice and tight. So basically the pull rod is now ready to move, it's in line with the crank at the top so we just need to the join the two parts together with a chain. So Kirkpatrick actually supplied quite a nice chain, um, it's longer than this actually, you get quite a decent length of chain but I've actually made it the right length for our, uh, our system we've got here. Now, because this is sprung at the top, we need to make sure that when we fit the chain, the pull rod itself is actually in its top position. The crank at the top will hold it up so that when you pull it, you can pull it down and it will engage the crank at the top. So what you need to do with your chain, if you can see the end of that, I've opened the end of the chain up. You might need to remove some of the links out. It's just a case of bending these with a pair of pliers. Um, you can just get them in there and just bend them out and remove some of the links if needs be. So we've opened the top one up. In case of threading it through the top. Obviously it's a bit short because we need to pull that up. It engages into there and then it's a case of bending them back again so they seal up on top of the pull rod. 
and that one seals up top of the crack. So there it is. So the pull rod now engages when you pull it down and it moves the crank at the top which is obviously pulling the cord inside. The cord then is going to connect to our bell which we'll describe next in the video of how to install the pulleys and the bell system for the inside. So this is our J2089 nickel butler bell for the inside of your house. We also do a brass version which is the J2086 um, but this is the nickel version that we're going to show you how to fit shortly. It actually comes with these associated parts. So you get this pulley here, which is a directional pulley. Um, it allows the rope to uh, angle uh, and move at a 90 degree angle, which we'll show you shortly. Uh, there's another pulley that it comes with, which is this one, which is just a simple guiding pulley that screws into your wall. And obviously the beautiful bell itself. It also comes with some cord, uh, which we've uh, put through the wall to our pull rod on the outside. Now, in order to complete the installation, you'll also need what we call a blanking pulley, which is this device here. So it's the pulley that um, is in the wall where the cord comes through. So there's a little hole through the center of it there, and we'll show you how that works in shortly. But basically, the cord is going to come from the outside of the wall, through the inside, through that hole, and over this pulley. Um, all these parts come with nickel-plated screws uh, or brass screws if you have the brass version. Okay, so we showed you the components of the butler bell. We need to think next where we want it positioned. Now obviously we've already fitted the pull rod on the outside so it's going to be coming through our wall uh, somewhere out here. So the blanking pulley is going to be the part where the cord comes through the wall. So that's going to be fitted up here. Then we're going to probably want the bell around here with the guiding pulley and the directional pulley in between. So we'll get all that assembled and uh, show you how to fit it to the wall. Okay so we've got our cord now coming through our wall and we need to obviously get the cord to connect to this uh, the butler bell itself. The butler bell has a little arm on the back there, if you can see that, which it actually uh, moves with a little eyelet in. So the cord's going to pull onto this, and it's going to have to come in from the side. So it's going to pull in a vertical motion this way. So when it operates, it pulls the arm and makes the bell ring. So we need to obviously get the cord and train it along the wall to do that motion, and we'll show you now how to do that with the pulleys. So I've screwed our bell now to the wall. So this is where we want it to be positioned. So we've just got to get this cord to this bell. The first thing the cord's going to need to go through is your blanking pulley. So this is obviously the item that's sold separately. Uh, we do them in brass or nickel. So the cord's going to come through the hole in the centre of the blanking pulley. And then depending on whether we want the cord to go up or down, depends on which orientation this is going to be in. If we want the cord to go up, it's going to come through the hole. It's going to go around the pulley and come up. If you want it to go down, it's going to come through the hole, around the pulley and go down. In our case, we actually need it to go up, so we're going to have it that way up, okay? Uh, and it's just a case of thread the cord through the centre of the uh, pulley. There's a little retaining clip on these pulleys, just to hold the cord in place. So we need to get our cord to go underneath that first, and around the wheel. So now it works like that. And then we can thread it up to the wall. I've already drilled the holes for it, so we'll just screw that onto the wall and get the cord to come up ready to hit the next pulley. Okay, so we've got our blanking pulley fitted to the wall now. This is the J2093 blanking pulley, which is the nickel version. We also do a J2092, which is the brass version of it. Um, the next pulley that we need to fit, which is part of the kit that comes with the actual uh, bell itself, is this directional pulley. So the idea of this pulley is it's going to allow the cord to come up and then make a right angle turn and go along your wall. So now we're going to have the cord going and heading straight towards that bell, which is what we need it to do. I've already drilled some holes for it. It's going to be positioned in the wall quite high up there. The cord's going to come up from the blanking pulley and hit the directional pulley to go over it and head off towards the bell itself. So we'll get that screwed to the wall and see where we go next. So we've got our directional pulley fitted now. Notice as well, when the cord's uh, connected to it, it must be in line. So you need to offset this pulley slightly from this one down here so the cord stays in a nice straight line. Um, so it's coming up to this one now, it's obviously heading the right direction to reach our bell. There's one last pulley which is this one, it's just a guide really. So it can go in the centre between the directional pulley and the bell itself, um, but it just screws into the wall just to help guide the cord. It's not particularly long run on this one, so it's more decorative in this case, but actually it could be more useful if you've got quite a long run that the cord needs to go on. Okay, so we screwed this pulley into the wall. This is called the extension pulley. Um, we sell these separately as well. We do them in the brass and nickel version. So just a case of getting our cord and threading it through the extension. 
There's a little retaining clip on these pulleys as well, just to hold the cord in place. So we'll just get it through there, and now we've reached the bell itself. So it's just a case of getting the cord and tying it through that little eyelet on the back, making a nice clean knot. So I'll get that done, and we're more or less there. So we've got our cord tied on now. When you tie the cord on, just make sure it's nice and tight. You might need to pull that arm over a bit so it's got a bit of spring tension on it. Just makes the cord run nice and tight, makes the bell ring nicely as well. So the well, last thing to do, just one little test, let's see if it works. Brilliant, gives a lovely little ring, and that ring keeps going for quite a long time as well. So you'll definitely know people are coming to visit you.